Hello, welcome back to Psych, and the only video for Chapter 15 is over psychology and testing. What are different types of psychology tests that we use? Your learning targets for today are to list and describe the types of and four important features of a psychological test, being standardization, reliability, validity, and norms. Uh, we'll compare what achievement tests and aptitude tests are. We'll list and describe the different types of objective tests and then the different types of projective tests. So let's go ahead and get started. The features of a test. You're all no stranger to standardized tests. Standardized tests are tests that are administered and scored the same way every time. Some experts, uh, they tend to question the validity of these tests and of course they're going to question the validity of any test but for example the SAT is a standardized test. We've already talked about reliability and validity. Reliability is how consistent a test results are and validity is does the test measure and predict accurately what it is supposed to measure and predict. And how do we measure validity? Well tests usually have what are called validity scales and these are subscales of a test and this basically is our questions in the test that are designed to tell if the test taker is telling the truth or not. Are they, um, are they trying to answer questions and make themselves look in a favorable light while they at completely ignore all their wrongdoings or are they unintentionally misunderstanding some of the questions? Are they trying to deceive the person? Uh, all of these validity scales are different ways of telling is the test measuring and predicting what it is supposed to. Norms is the third, or I'm sorry, the fourth one. Norms are um, groups, and we get our norms from norm groups. Norm groups are a large group of test takers similar to those for whom the test is intended. So for the SAT, our norm group would be high school students, and then the high school students who take that test give us our norms, which are established standards of performance that set the averages for the test. Uh, diff more types of psychological tests. Uh, we have the behavior rating scales are used to measure behavior, and that is a feature of a test. So if I were to go to a daycare um, just to do some uh, naturalistic observation of kids in a daycare, I would count how many times I saw a hit or a, um, a kid hit another kid and I would mark that down. That's a, an example of a behavior rating scale. A self-report is answers that rely on people giving your feelings and experiences and of course the validity of that has been called into question as well, but that is a self-report test. Um, the three different kinds of tests and types of tests are achievement tests, aptitude and interest tests, and personality tests. And we're going to talk about all of those in more detail right now. Here's how we would establish norms for a test. If the average is here, we count the standard deviations. Uh, so negative one standard deviations, negative two, plus one, plus two. So where do you fall on that bell curve in the mean? is the norm. That is the norm of the test. Achievement tests are tests that you take pretty much every week, every day in school. They measure people's skills and the knowledge that they have already accrued in specific academic areas. History and math are examples of uh, achievement tests. Psychology are achievement tests. Um, Learning, intelligence, and motivation all play roles on scores that students get in these achievement tests. Um, students who wish to go on to a graduate school may be required to take a test in their major field of study to see how well and how much, they, how much knowledge they have accrued thus far. And tests are designed to show whether students have enough knowledge in the specific area to succeed. Aptitude tests measure whether a person is likely to do well in a given field of work or study. The scholastic assessment test is a general aptitude test, but the SAT has been under some controversy in the past decade because it's been called scholastic achievement test, scholastic aptitude test, but now it's just scholastic assessment test. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. You probably can, don't worry. 
The SAT predicts how well students are likely to do in college, but it also takes a look at what they've already learned in high school. So it's kind of a cross between an aptitude and an achievement test. Um, there's the LSATs and the MCATs. Those are specific law school and medical college tests that you have to take before you go into um, those schools. There's also the GRE or the graduate requirement exam. If you want to go to graduate school, some uh, colleges require that. Um, aptitude is not the only thing that factors into achievement in school. It can a positive attitude helps placing a high value of, on education from an early age. Perseverance and optimism all play a role in how well somebody will do on an aptitude test. So aptitude tests are intended to measure the potential for learning in a specific area, whereas, as, and they're given before you start something. Um, achievement tests are given after you have learned something to see how well you have achieved. Um, vocational interest inventories, these are just your interest tests. Uh, people that usually perform better in jobs that interest them and people who share interests with those who are likely to be successful at a job are more likely to be successful. So there is the Cooter Career Search, um, which gives you, measures your interests. Is, it is a forced choice format, so you must answer every question, even if it doesn't fit exactly you. And it shows your interests, like science, music, art, literature, math, etc. And then there's the Campbell Interest and Skills Survey, and that basically compares your interests with the interests of people successful in various jobs. So it would, if you had the same interests as Bill Gates, it might suggest that you go into computers. Um, these are useful to students who usually don't have a career goal, um, but they're only one source of guidance and can't be used to definitively say, you will do well in this career because you have this interest. Now we get to objective tests. An objective test and projective tests are two different things. Objective tests are, they give test takers with a standardized group of test items in the form of a questionnaire. So it's the test that you are um, familiar with. The, um, psychologists use these tests to determine psychological problems. So the MMPI, or the Minnesota Multifacet Personality Inventory, is the most widely used personality test. Um, they even use it in the U.S. government to make sure people are um, of sound mind before they give them secret or top secret security clearances. It's 567 true-false questions, usually take 60 to 90 minutes to complete, and it can determine psychological problems as well as psychological tendencies, and the scores are placed on a scale that helps determine these problems, and there's 10 scales of the um, MMPI. The CPI, or the California Psychological Inventory, is a little more reliable than the MMPI. It's been developed since then. And these are designed to test normal personality traits. And it actually shares 194 items with the MMPI. But it's 434 true or false questions. And it seems to be a better indicator of success, leadership, and reactions to stress. And then we have the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which you have taken a version of. And this is designed to measure psychological preferences and how people perceive the world and make decisions. And it focuses on, and it puts value on, the emphasis of naturally occurring differences. So we have our dichotomies, our E and I, how we focus and get our attention, or focus our attention and get our energy. We have the S and N, how we perceive or take in information. Um, T and F is how we prefer to make decisions based on thinking or feeling. And JP is judging or perceiving. Do you want uh, structure in your world or do you prefer to float more freely to th through the external world? Now, projective tests. There are no wrong answers, and that is the difference. Like true, false, it can give you a tendency that you may be psychotic or you may be more prone to suicide or something like that. But projective tests, 
Um, test takers are asked to report what the stimuli being presented represent to them. It's open-ended, meaning there's no specific answers. There's no wrong answers to these tests. And an example of a projective test is the Rorschach inkblot test, where um, you're probably familiar with this. You are asked to look at an inkblot and tell the psychologist what it looks like to you. Um, uh, there are attempts to standardize the Rorschach, and the four factors influence answers. It's a person's locations, the, uh, the determinants of the picture, the content of the picture, and the form of the picture. So here are some examples. Um, here people usually see two humans. Um, here's sort of, I don't know what that is. But you're supposed to, certain answers keeping, um, certain answers are normal and other answers could reveal psychological problems. Then finally we have the thematic apperception test or the TAT test. So just the TAT. Um, it's like ATM machine. Uh, test takers are given a card with an illustration such as these and they're directed to tell a story about what is occurring in the picture. And the answer can reveal his or her needs, values, underlying motives, concerns. Um, this picture of the girl, um, when I've talked about this in class, a lot of girls tell me her boyfriend dumped her and she's waiting by the phone to hear from him and she has a protruding belly so she's pregnant. And that can reveal a lot about the worries of those teenage girls who told me about um, that story. This guy could be a war veteran and he is mad because his arm's really short and his house is messed up and there's a lot of different things going on here. But that is all I have to tell you about testing. Be sure to fill out those learning targets and I will see you later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.